Me when someone offers me a spliff at a party. You're gambling with your health, maybe even your life. Drugs don't make your problems go away. They just create more. Me when the bartender lets the foam spill over the side of my pint. You blundering fool! My ex when I call her and beg her to take me back. When you're feeling lonely or sad, and we all do sometimes, if you try singing a song or maybe whistling or maybe just smiling, you'll feel a lot better. Honest, try it and see. Bye now. Me bumping into Fragmental at a fragrance convention. I have you now, you muscle-bound oaf! Me trying to help my niece and nephew with their homework. Now, why do I surround myself with fools? My reaction when a woman tries to get close to me. Listen, I am not nice, I am not kind, and I am not wonderful. How I feel about the women on Chatterbait. It is to these unsung heroes that we owe so much. Heroic women ready and eager. Me meeting wafts from the loft for the first time. You pathetic pair of pitiful pinheads! Me when I upload my second sexiest fragrance reviewers video. You're all fools if you think you can stop me! How I remember knocking one out for the very first time. In that one tiny second, I saw a boy grow into a man. Hey guys, welcome back to the show. So today it's going to be top 10 fougere fragrances, top 10 designer fougere fragrances. I've done, a, I'm not sure if I've done a fougere list as such, but I think I've done barber shops, but it's way, way back and I've acquired so many new fragrances. I think it's time to revisit this topic. So a favorite style of mine, the fougere fragrance. Notice that I've put in the title and thumbnail, their sexiest fougeres. <laughs> He said it again! I'm just playing around with people a bit, as you've seen, probably if you've seen some of my recent videos, this whole sexy issue. Uh, you know, basically, it does seem that if you put the word sexy in a video title and or thumbnail, you, more people will watch it. So, you know, there's nothing really specifically sexy about these fragrances, to be quite frank with you. And it, it's not the genre for the guy, really, who's sort of desperate to be sexy. To, to women or anybody else uh, but so I'm just sort of playing around so basically that's going to be in the title and the thumbnail uh, but it hopefully doesn't degrade or dumb down the content of the video which is exactly the same as if I just called it best fougere fragrances get it okay so let me know what you think about that right so let's get stuck into I'm going to flip the camera and do the old POV stuff one of my favorite ways to shoot a video and yeah we've got 10 really really good ones I'm talking designer fragrances so we're leaving out the niche ones what is a fougere fragrance really hard to define really to be honest with you uh, it was first created in the late 19th century Hubigant's Fougère Royale being the first one the word is a French word literally meaning fern like so it was created to sort of um, magically create the smell of how one would imagine a fern should or might smell if it had a strong smell which it actually doesn't so we kind of have a green fresh fragrance there's nearly always and should be a note of lavender in there as well and some oak moss and tonka bean um, it's very difficult to define it very very specifically barbershop fragrances are generally fougeres the, the ones that we apply that adjective to barbershop but you know all these terms are a little bit uh, permeable and movable and not specific but i think we all know it's a kind of a classic gentlemanly smell and uh, i've covered a few different eras we're going not in chronological order to make it a little bit more interesting and less predictable let's flip the camera angle and get stuck into it oh pardon me Okay, guys, let's get stuck into it then. So the first one I'm going to go with is Tom Ford's Beau de Jour. Now, this was originally released in the Private Blend series, so it would be a niche fragrance in many people's eyes. However, I think certainly when we get into the Signature series, where they've now reissued it uh, in, in this kind of bottle, a little bit more of an affordable price, you've got to really regard this as a designer fragrance. So it's one of the real recent releases, because I, I was struggling a little bit for those in this list, because the Fougere, very much a classic old school style. Niche houses give us some great ones now, but the designer fragrance, houses tend to not favor that fragrance style so much these days however uh, Beau de Jour from Tom Ford then it was it was relaunched in 2020 I think the original was 2018 the the private blend one uh, and you're noticing this one you've got lavender extract and lavender uh, in those are the top notes so the only ones apparently and the mid notes are rosemary oak moss mint basil geranium base notes are uh, patchouli and amber it's an absolutely classic textbook 
fresh air fragrance it really really is good i'm just going to sniff a little bit from the lens yes yeah, so very very smooth not really an old old school hairy chest type of smell but it, it does have that old vibe about it it's quite green and bitter we don't really have any citrus notes there and it doesn't really have you know either we don't have a bergamot note listed there so this is quite a, a warming kind of smell it's quite a comforting masculine smell there is that little twist of the the, the um, green things there the mint and the basil i love those kind of accords those kind of herbaceous tones in the mid and i think they work really well with this rather smooth warming patchouli amber oak moss base it's, it's an absolutely classic textbook fougere fragrance and if you're sort of looking for somewhere to start with this genre and you maybe you don't want to go too old school so no one's really getting the way you smell i think this is a superb place to start so top top quality stuff from tom ford and hats off to them in this modern era for giving us an excellent fougere type fragrance now it would be amiss of me not to mention that my brand norton and wilson created a fougere because we love the star so much therefore norton and wilson's gravitas pour on which has received amazing acclaim from so many people would be an excellent choice it's not a designer fragrance because it's niche but the price is pretty close to it it is pretty much a, at the higher end of a designer fragrance price for nowadays for a true niche gem from the amazing perfumer john stevens so there is a link in the description if you would like to check that one out i i'm biased but i do recommend it so let's move on i'm going to do something totally different now that one you can easily pick up of course this one you most certainly cannot so this is going to be i'm going to put the box on the screen too and um, this one is charles jordan un homme un homme de charles jordan and this is absolutely spectacular i just picked this up not knowing what it was but liking the look of the bottle and the name i found it on ebay and i picked it up and then i read up on it of course since then so way back in 1980 this was released uh, again aromatic fougere fragrance and those behind the fragrance according it says here francois caron and your notes are lavender anise tarragon marjoram bergamot and lemon uh, mid notes of patchouli carnation jasmine geranium cyclamen and cedar they had loads of long note listings back then and in the base oak moss leather sandalwood amber musk and tonka bean very very classic fougere style fragrance very rich very complex a beautiful twist of a little bit of an anise note giving it that licorice thing that a lot of fougere fragrances had and i'm just going to spray a little bit on my hand actually i haven't got a fragrance on yet tonight so let's make this scent of the night let's do one more oh wow this is a wow this is a true wow if you can find this just pick it up it's incredible it's so rich it's warming it's almost kind of sweet it's almost exotic there's lovely oh there's lovely creamy sandalwood i just i'm really enjoying smelling this actually um yeah you've got these spices in there you've got such complexity floral tones a bit of a leathery masculine base it's it is actually kind of almost seductive grown-up sexy stuff not sure how much the juice in the bottle may have aged a bit it hasn't gone off in any way to me that it smells bad but it perhaps smelled a bit different if i'd opened this fresh in 1980 but i'm really happy to have this in the collection People do compare this one to the uh, a very famous one that I don't have, which is going to get a mention in this soon. So if you can find this, get it. It's, it's, it's probably one of the best, most exciting smells in this list. Let's move on then. So we're going to go to the 80s, a little bit later in the decade now, the mid 80s. Uh, one again, out of, uh, how much do I want to piss people off with stuff they can't get? Let's, do, let's go early 80s then, one that you definitely easily can pick up cheaply. Anybody out there who wants to pick up a fougere, maybe you've not tried the style much, don't think it's your thing, and you don't want to spend a lot, you don't even want to spend, you don't want to spend Tom Ford, Baudet's your money, go for Dracar Noir because it's a textbook fougere and it's a really, really excellent, well-made fragrance. You can pick it up for crazy cheap prices. Modern version still smells really good. They, they brought this out back in 1982. There was originally a Dracar fragrance it's from the house of Guy Laroche. And the nose was Pierre Vorgny. I don't say his name very well. I'm going to whiz through the notes. You've got lavender, lemon, bergamot, mint, rosemary, lemon, verbena, basil, and artemisia. And then in the mid, you've got juniper, coriander, cinnamon, wormwood, carnation, angelica, jasmine, and paste notes, oak moss, leather, fir, pine tree needles, sandalwood, vetiver, patchouli, cedar, amber, and resins. And this just has this really nice, fresh, affable, kind of straight out the gym locker type fragrance. It's sort of, despite that huge note listing, it's something quite simple about the fragrance. Uh, it's crisp, it's clean, it's got green herby kind of tones again, 
and it's just a very, very classic, easy to wear, likeable, fresh, clean, spick and span, amiable scent. Real men, real style. Antonio actually came on the show, if you saw the interview, and he mentioned this in a video that he did uh, a while back on his channel, I think, where he said Dracar Noir is just a really great option for guys. And it's, it's gone so out of fashion that it's no longer cheesy and cliched as it perhaps once was because a lot of people used to wear it. So I think even if you're a younger guy watching this, it could be a real uh, under the radar curveball kind of fragrance to get. Dracar Noir had to be in the list. If you'd like to see an extra video from me every week, sign up to my Patreon group. It's only $2 a month. There's a link in the description. And we have loads of interesting stuff going on in there. I do a lot of fragrance stuff, of course, but I also talk about some other things to do with my life. It's really fun, and I hope to see you in there. As I say, you can follow the link in the description or just go to Patreon and type in Mr. Smelly 1977. Let's go back a little further in time now for Paco Rabanne Pour On. Modern version still very much available. I'm lucky to have a vintage bottle. Uh, this was one of the real ones that launched the, the Fougere fragrance or relaunched it in the world of designer houses because it came out way, way back in 1973. And it's a benchmark fragrance. It really, really is. The nose was Jean Martel. And your notes again will sound a little familiar. Rosemary, Clary Sage and Brazilian rosewood at the top, a lavender and geranium and tonka bean in the mid, and, and base notes of oak moss, honey, musk and amber. So a real classic textbook fougere fragrance. Again, very rich, a little bit of a sweetness in there. There's a honey note in the base, and a hint of the kind of animalic musky stuff that uh, can work really well in a masculine style scent. It's green, it's herbaceous, it's very old school smelling. The modern one I find not doesn't quite excite me the way these old bottles do. Again, I'm not sure if it's aged a bit, but really worth checking out on eBay, I would say. Get an old one if you can. If, the, if it looks this way, it's, if you do a little bit of research, you can quickly find out which ones are slightly vintage. And if you get a, a vintage bottle of this, I think if, if you're a big fan of this genre, if you're a collector, it's a kind of a must have or must try. And I, I'm really happy that I've got my lovely vintage bottle, one of the benchmarks in the style. So we shall move swiftly on then. What's going to be next? I think we're going for Gucci Nobile, 1988. I'm sorry, guys, this one is hard to find. I'm very lucky to have it, but um, it is going to cause you problems finding it. But it might be worth hanging around on eBay for a while and see if one comes up. So 1988 was the year. And uh, it was you know, just a golden era for the Fougere style. And this was really one of the absolute benchmarks. It's got that lovely green color, that lovely bottle design, which I really, really enjoy. And I'm going to whiz through the notes here. Uh, bergamot, lavender, rosemary, tarragon, lemon, nutmeg, flower. Those are your top notes. Mid notes of balsam for green notes, geranium, jasmine, rose, cyclamen and carnation. And in your base, oak moss, sandalwood, vetiver, cedar, patchouli, amber, tonka bean and musk. Very green, sharp, bitter. This is one of the more green and bitter ones. Very dry. Not much sweetness in this one for me. And I really like that, actually. I, I think it actually reminds me of much of what I said about Dracar Noir. But just a little bit of a higher quality, better smelling cousin maybe to something like Dracar Noir. It's, it's got this lovely green bitterness, a certain sharpness about it, these sharp green tones. And again, that wonderful complexity, the use of the real oak moss in this one, because any bottle you get is going to be a vintage from the era when oak moss could be used in greater amounts than it can today. And that gives this great sticking power and very, very distinctive kind of dry down on these fougeres. I love, love, love Gucci Nobile. Okay, let's see what we're going to go with next. I'm going to go right back in time for the originator. Can we call this a designer house? Don't know. Originally, it was from Fabergé. Nowadays, different companies make it under license. It's called Brute, of course. And I think it really perhaps kicked off the idea that the Fougère would be just a go-to style for men in the kind of mainstream market. And that's important. I think it paved the way for many of these other ones. Some people see it as a bit tacky and all that, uh, but Brute from Fabergé, 1965. Just classic green, soapy, musky fragrance. I'm just going to see if I can pull up the note listing for this one because I didn't do so, which I really should have done before the video. But let's see if we can find it online. Um, the note listing, again, could be very similar to other things that I've already mentioned. It's a 1968 release, according to Fragrantica. You don't always trust everything they say but I'll go with that and um, yeah knows behind it Carl Mann and he, he really has to take credit for creating one of the all-time classics so you've got anise lavender basil bergamot and lemon in your mid you've got geranium and ylang lang plus jasmine oak moss vetiver tonka bean patchouli vanilla and sandalwood it's got this kind of talcum powder vibe masculine 
green spick and span soapy and fresh literally used in many barber shops here in the uk that they spray it on the back of your neck this is a one bottle you can get you get a really cheap aftershave version two even this special reserve though is only about 18 pounds i'd get this because it's got the brilliant medallion man design and it was absolutely prevalent in the 70s again it's so out of fashion now hardly anyone wears it so i think it's not a cliche let me know if you're an 18 year old guy and you, you got lucky wearing brute okay we're going to move on so next up it's about time i got back into something like the modern era another 21st century gem of a fougette and this is of course yves saint laurent's rive gauche pour homme and it is the classic barbershop designer fragrance which kind of smells very much like a better version of brute in my humble opinion many people compare it to a shaving foam type of smell different shaving foams have type slightly different scents but it makes some kind of sense so tom ford was creative director at the brand when this one happened and he clearly respects the old school styles and this was really one of the absolute best amongst them uh, it's opening up i'm not going to list all the notes because it's so similar to the others but it's just got this creamy smoothness it's a little bit like some of the others maybe like brute paco rabanne pour homme or one of the ones i'm going to mention later but smoothed out with it, a slightly less old school hairy chest vibe it really does smell like fresh out of the barber shop in a totally good way again if you want to smell kind of fantastically masculine a little bit retro but not totally dated i think reeve gauche is a great option pour homme however tragically now discontinued good luck finding it in this bottle the cube bottles that came out a few years later could still be on ebay if you can get one snap it up River Fougere from Dua is a perfect copy. Get that if you can't get this. Let's do the last few then. We've got a few, a few more left. Okay, we're going to go with Givenchy. Givenchy Zerius, 1986. Totally underrated. Don't know why it doesn't get the credit it deserves. You can still buy a reissue. I've got the uh, vintage one. I'm not sure about the reissue. I haven't tried it yet. I really must get a bottle, actually. But uh, I'm going to give trust to Givenchy that it won't suck. But, uh, yeah, you're going to struggle to find this. 1986 spectacular Art Deco bottle design. Really loved the bottle. It's one of the best things about it. And, um, again, the note listing so similar to the others, I won't reel them off. But uh, there's a bit of mandarin orange listed, which stands out from some of the others. Cypress and juniper berries are in there. This one is different. There's a, a real curveball note of incense, which we don't expect. And it's got this just magical, almost just a tiny bit exotic. And maybe it was something quite daring and modernistic at the time, although it does have that kind of, definitely has a... Oh, yeah, it actually does have that soapy barbershop vibe. But it's soapy barbershop with a hint of uh, brightness and a, a strange sort of avant-garde mystique, maybe going with the sort of bottle design. And this, this kind of just semi-exotic hint of incense gives it a real magic factor, real wow factor fougere. And if you can find an old bottle, do get it. Let me know, guys, if anyone's got the, the modern reissue and how it compares to the old one if you are in a position to do that comparison so i think we have a couple left we've got now our zaro prom the obligatory uh, fragrance that has to be in this list 1978 release very prevalent to be smelled on people in the 1980s therefore and you know just one of the benchmark aromatic fougeres of all time the note listing for this one um, again would be very similar to the others notable features i would say is a musky base uh, which is a, just a little bit sort of funky and sexy, and this twist of anise that we saw in some of the others, very similar to things like Charles Georges Dan Poron, which I just think is is like this, but just a touch richer and better. And it's uh, you can also say that Rive Gauche Poron is very similar, but perhaps has just smoothed out some of the old school, really rugged medallion man feel of this one, which you may still enjoy. So I really like Azaro Poron, and you can pick it up for crazy cheap prices. Mine's a slightly vintage version. I believe the modern one hasn't held up too badly in, in the inevitable reformulation. Last but not least, then, uh, we'll, regular viewers of the program, both of you, will be well familiar with my love of Sport de Paco Rabanne, an avant-garde fougere fragrance, I think, in its time. One of these sport fragrances that paved the way and, and, and broke the mould, or what's the word? Yeah, one of the first sport fragrances, anyway, in the 80s. And it's got this little bit of a lime thing. It's, it's a bit like Paco Rabanne pour homme but with a citrus twist. It's kind of a citrus fougere, the most, one of the more citrusy ones, but it's, it's a million miles from any other sport fragrances that you'd smell from the, the 2000s, like Allure on Sport or anything. It's rugged, it's green. It's the sport fragrance from the era when sports people wore headbands and had wooden tennis rackets. It's really, really great stuff. 
And yeah, if you like a fougere with an old school vibe and a little twist of a kind of limey citrusy thing on the top, this would be the one to go. I just love that bottle design. Guys, let me know. I'm sure I missed out something. Oh yeah, very briefly, the one I must get but I haven't got, Patu Pour Homme. This is a legend. It costs a fortune, an arm and a leg. If you find it on eBay, it's discontinued. 1980 release. Jean Carlyle, and apparently it's amazing. I've not tried it. Let me know if you have. Shall I pick it up? Shall I try and get at least a little mini? Discuss. So thanks ever so much for joining me, guys. Uh, I'll see you in the next video. Remember, whatever you're doing in life, let's project. Bye-bye. Bon Viveur by Norton and Wilson. Because life is meant to be enjoyed.